Hi everybody, Steve here. Not in a cemetery, although with all this grass, probably looks like a cemetery, but I'm actually here in the city of Encino, just a couple of exits west of the 405 freeway in the San Fernando Valley. And right behind me, right here, right in this corner here, was once the ranch, the very famous ranch of actor Edward Everett Horton. And you might even be able to see his street sign right there. The street used to be called, when he lived here, I think it was Amistoy Avenue. Back in the 1950s and 60s and 70s when he lived here, when he first moved in, there was no freeway. And then sometime in the 1950s or 60s, the San Fernando Valley here started growing. And his enormous ranch with acres and acres of land and property was just cut in half by the city, or I guess probably by the county, who bought a big chunk of his land and built the freeway and turned much of his property into the 101 Ventura Freeway. He died in 1970, and from what I read, he died here in Encino, so I mean, guess, I'm guessing he lived here on his property until he died, and I guess he just lived with the uh, freeway noise for a decade or two. Now, the ranch sounded really cool. Apparently, it had 17 rooms and 14 working fireplaces. So it must have been huge. It's so sad to see that it's no longer here and there's a condo development in its place. And I'm guessing that probably no one in that condo development even knows or remembers who Edward Everett Horton was. Now, he was a comedian. You may remember some of his movies and TV shows. And he named the ranch Belly Acres. That's pretty funny, isn't it? And quite a few of his famous friends actually lived there as well in the home. Actress Marjorie Lord and Vivian Vance both lived in the guest house at various times. Now, some of you I Love Lucy fans may even remember he appeared on one episode of I Love Lucy. So I guess he was friends with Vivian at least and probably Lucy and Desi as well. Later in his career, he also appeared on an episode of the TV show Batman. How many of you remember that episode? Talk about uh, TV trivia, right? Now, I remember him most for his, his early movies with Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers and some of the old movie classics from the old Hollywood period. And I think I remember him just because he always played sort of the stereotyped gay character. Back then, you couldn't be gay and be in the movies, but I think everyone knew that his character was probably gay in most of those movies that he appeared in. And I'm guessing that most baby boomers probably remember him best for his role as the narrator of a Fractured Fairy Tale tells, which was a part, a segment of the Rocky and Bullwinkle show. I do remember him from that too. So I remember him from his movies. He had a very distinctive look and his roles were definitely memorable as well. He was very funny. At the time I was just a kid, I, I didn't think of him as being gay in many of his movies playing sort of a gay stereotype. But at the time I just thought he was funny and I liked him. And he was a great character actor who was pretty memorable in all of his roles. He was a bachelor. He was single. He never married and he never discussed his private life when he was alive other than just to maybe joke about it back in those days in Hollywood if you wanted to work you had to remain in the closet now I read that actor Gavin Gordon was his longtime companion Gordon also never married and also never discussed his personal and private life so I'm assuming they were just forced to be in the closet because of the profession they were in or because of the times they were living in I'm gonna visit his gravesite next I'm going to head over to Forest Lawn in Glendale, which is about 10-15 minutes from here. And instead of them being buried together or nearby, Gordon is buried back east and Horton is buried here. And I find that's very, very common, especially back in those days. You find very, very few gay couples buried together. No matter how long they were together, even if they were together like 50 years, they're usually buried in separate places. And if I ever get back east to where Gordon is buried, I'll try to visit his gravesite. But for today, I'm going to go visit Edward Everett Horton's final resting place. And quite a few of you have asked me to do that. And so today's the day that I'm finally going to do that. I've been wanting to myself anyway for quite a long time. Sometimes it takes me a while to get to some of these gravesites. You know, it's kind of fun and weird to think that Vivian Vance stayed right here on Horton's property. And who knows, maybe the guest house was right over there in the location where the homeless person is now living in that tent. It's kind of weird when you just think how things change over the years. And wouldn't it have been fun to have known Horton? I mean, he seems like he would have been a really fun guy to, to be friends with and to have known. So now I'm going to head over to the cemetery and see if I can find his gravesite. Fingers crossed. 
Well, I wasn't paying attention and I missed the 134 turnoff to Glendale and I ended up on the Hollywood Freeway by mistake. So I decided just to exit and swing by the Hollywood Walk of Fame and see if I could find Horton Star. Unfortunately, it's kind of filthy as you can see and I almost walked right by it. It looks like the berries from this nearby tree have fallen down and all of the tourist traffic has squished them into the star. They are pretty good about cleaning the stars here on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. But I guess I just got here at the wrong time of day before they had a chance to clean his star. The Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale is only around six miles from here, taking surface streets. So let's go see if I can get over there now without getting lost again. The next time I'm in Hollywood, I'll stop by Horton's star again and see if I can show it to you when it's not covered in debris. According to his Find a Grave Memorial page, Horton's gravesite is located at the very top of the hill that you see straight ahead and on the right hand side here within the Whispering Pines section. It's not a long walk from the street, but as you can see, it's a pretty steep one. So if you're not into walking or climbing or hiking, you're gonna have a difficult time getting to the top of the hill. Maybe there's another way to get up there that's uh, easier, I don't know, but from the entrance street, it's pretty steep climb. Well, I made it to the top of the hill and the GPS on his Find a Great Memorial page was very helpful. I think it would have taken me hours to find without it. And it looks like he's buried here next to his parents. And that's the entrance gate there straight ahead. And this is the first time I've been here when the fountain wasn't on. I had no idea that you could see the front gate from his gravesite. You can also see downtown Los Angeles. On a really hot scorching day like today though, in the middle of summer, it could definitely use a few more shade trees up here. It's strange to think that Horton was born in Brooklyn way back in 1886. He died from cancer in Encino on September 29, 1970 at the age of 84. He got his start in vaudeville theater and later on Broadway, then went on to radio, film, television, and even voice acting. Earlier I mentioned that he appeared in a couple of episodes of Batman as Chief Screaming Chicken and that was in 1966, but a year earlier in 1965 he appeared in a half dozen episodes of the TV show F Troop as Roaring Chicken. He appeared in more than a dozen TV shows and in more than a hundred movies, including quite a few classics like the 1963 It's a Mad 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 World. But when it comes to his movies, he's probably best remembered for co-starring with Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire in some of their most popular movies like Top Hat, Shall We Dance, and The Gay Divorcee. So how many of you remember Edward Everett Horton? I'd love to know in the comments section. I know at least a handful of you do because you've left comments in the past asking me to visit his gravesite, or you've just mentioned him for other reasons. A while back, Memobber even left a comment saying that he was her grandmother's first cousin. Others who mentioned him include Bev H., Mary Blaylock, Steve Paul, Craig Talbot, and Pat McCoy. And this week I want to thank my newest Patreon supporters, Amy Co. and Vito J. La Serenza. Thank you so much, Amy Co. and Vito, for your extra generous donations to my channel. It really does mean a lot. I also want to give a shout out and a very big thank you to all of my new subscribers this past week. So until next time, thanks for sharing the memories, everybody.